and the respect given to Meliodas, I actually wanted one of these priority picks possibly to be something like a Jarvan. Um, but like I said, it feels like with priority pick, they're going to prioritize boss's champion pool. And on blue side, Silas Ben kind of continuing to add to the idea that I don't think they play the champion or at least are comfortable enough picking it here, so they will ban it away. PvP, they'll go with Karthus and Hecarim. So as you kind of mentioned, we normally see some more quote-unquote required bans on the side of red, but PvP just going for target bans right now as Akali going to be the third there for Vega. And kind of the last one opening up is the likes of this Tarek, and this is something that really hurts Vega Squadron. Because they ban Silas and Akali from the blue side, it means that they don't have to get anything taken away from them on red side. You know, they don't have access to getting the Sona Tarek because maybe PvP want to take away the Assassins versus taking away that bot lane. Maybe boss's Hecarim sneaks through, but I just think it's a, a really big hole that if they go farther in this tournament, if Vega Squadron do win this best of fives, that the main stage teams will certainly abuse. Well, there's Aurelia, their first pick, but had to leave open something. So Jay's still on the table here for PvP. Zeros had a pretty strong showing last game, although they will actually take Rek'Sai as the first pick. So Meliodas fancies himself taking away a jungler from a Nanasik. I really did like the hover of both the Jace and the Galio, though. I think it would work really well in tandem with Rek'Sai. If they go this early on into the draft, maybe they're suspecting that Big Coral might not get another pick like Kai'Sa again. This makes more sense. Yeah, I think I like Galio a little more here, and they will decide on that. Big Coral certainly, though, can't fault him. Had a monstrous Kai'Sa game in the last one. So not a bad man to get the champion. Okay. Sejuani Braum, though, Vega. I think defaulting back to the Freljord. Okay, here we go. I'm feeling much better about this one. So something that I really like about Sejuani is her ability to contest for Scuttlecrab because she does have a surprising amount of burst damage onto her kit early on due to uh, her, her passive and just kind of how like her W and her E and that ridiculous damage is going to work out. And so if you get things that can either skirmish like an Aurelia or have wave priority, you can get absolute control over rivers with someone like a Sejuani who most people think doesn't really come into impact until post level six. Also pairs up nicely with that Aurelia, which we heard Spawn talking about earlier when they as did well this second on Flexfix. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So again, lots of good straightforward CC. We saw Nautilus do wonders for PvB in that last game for a lot of the reason that when you find something, it's very easy to take an opportunity. However, fans are now kicking off in Phase 2. Kaiser was the last pick there in Phase 1 for PvB, and Gadget will continue to lose champions from the bot lane. But I don't think they're going to ban the Heimer from him. I think if he wants to, that would be the option to go for. I would love to see a more traditional ADC, something that would pair a bit better with a Braum, be able to follow up on the concussive blows versus something like a Heimer Dinger, which I think we're finally going to get. I think we're going to get standard League of Legends from Vega. At least in the... Uh, this tournament not, doesn't strike me as much of a Lucian player, but that's a pretty good way to bully a lane if you want to try and get aggressive in the 2v2. But we've seen three Varus games from him. That certainly strikes me as the champion you could pick here. Zeros, though, will lose Jace, as that's the ban from Vega. And one more ban now for PvB. We'll see if they do take your advice and stay away from the Heimer ban. It is interesting, the, uh, the priority that PvB gave Big Koro and Pallet in the draft, which I like it uh, because I think Big Koro and Pallet are having phenomenal tournaments so far, and you should just get right behind these guys, give them their comfort picks, allow them to impact the map. But coming into this tournament, you know, the big name that everyone wanted to talk about was Zeros. So the fact that you're in a situation where you grab the Kai'Sa and then you allow the Jace to be banned away when you know that Zeros really can perform in that champion, I think is something to spot through. Again, if PvB are the, the team that joins the main stage, where they'll stack their solo laners to help their bot lane get ahead, not just on the map, but in champion select. Well, there's actually Rise, so nice flex there for PvB. Have to be, feel pretty comfy that both Null and Zeros can play that champion. So now Vega have to finish off their draft. We'll see if they do opt for standard this time around or if they want to show us something a little different. Is it going to be the Varus? Will it be the Lucian? There okay. we go. It's actually the Lucian. So, yeah, pairing with that, uh, that bot lane, everything is going down down there. Everyone's dying at level 2, level 3. Might as well take a very strong 2v2 Lucian Braum. Does it get more stock standard than that? Yep, also, again, Nanasik, who we did see on the set 20 in their series yesterday, uh, hanging around that bottom lane for quite a while in that first game. So, certainly uh, expect him to be going there as well. Syndra also the last pick here for No Man's. That leaves one more for PvB. Oh, boy. Is he going to lock it in? How's he feeling? Again, Zero certainly a player that 
We'll actually do this sometimes. That is Fiora locked in for the Fong Vu Buffalo. Okay, very excited to see Fiora. I, feel, uh, I believe it was on the most recent patch that she was touched up a little bit coming into MSI. So you definitely know that this is going to be volatile, that one of these champions can pop off. But eventually, if the game goes long enough, Fiora will just take over any sort of side lane. Now, speaking of side lane, looking across PvP's composition, you got the likes of the Rise, got the Realm Warp. You can swing out with the likes of the Galio and the Kai'Sa, and then you have Fiora that can blow things up. So it's not just just about running a 1-4, the possibility of uh, constantly collapsing with so much cross-map mobility, like PvP, you expect them to be high octane, high tempo, um, very mobile heavy, very skirmish heavy. This comp gives them all of the tools to do that. And on the Vegas side, it has to feel like, you know, I look between Sedrani and Braum, and uh, I think I want to 5v5 where I can, or at least try and use that CC in the early stages of the game to get an advantage in the early game, because for both these teams, charting their journeys throughout this tournament, you certainly saw that when they had a lead, they were knew exactly what to do with it. And I feel like Vegas Wanderer's composition is much more dependent on kind of how things work out in the lane phase. I do feel that they have a lot of tools that they can contest for vision in the river, especially during lane phase with the likes of the Syndra, the Aurelia in tandem with Sejuani, you know, whether she's playing up top side of the map or bottom side of the map. Um, and you really want to abuse some of these early either level uh, spikes from your composition or you know, two item power spike window. So feels like Vegas Squadron, they don't necessarily have the same scaling potential, but they really can take over this early lane phase, depending on where they play their cards. Well, we'll have to see as the teams will spread out onto Summoner's Rift for the second time today. Vega looking to get themselves on the scoreboard. Fonghu Buffalo will be very happy with a quick sweep, and they can just stay home, relax for a few days, and then start the main stage of groups here at MSI. But still quite a while to go here, as I already see a number of members of Vega all grouped together, and they have a Braum on their team, so kind of know what this means. <laughs> Makes sense to go for a level one invade here, not only because like you're alluding to, the fact that Braum is so good at level one with the concussive blows and the winter's bite, but also you're against uh, Zeros' Fiora. I think they're hiding in Fog of War on the top side. Yep. Zeros though, in the right spot. Lunders out of the way, does not get tagged by Braum Q. But I think it's important to peek in here, try to get information about where Meliodas is going to be starting, and then if they continue to push in, uh, placing wards, and maybe, again, trying to split the map or look for some vertical jungling. Unfortunately for them, no deep vision spawned. placed, and uh, PvB move their bot lane to make sure to ward the red buff, and we'll see if and unless it goes there, at least get information on one half of the map. As we can see, looks like both junglers currently heading towards that red. One of the tricks that Pallet and Big Coro love to play, especially with Galio, is that when they don't have to leash for Meliodas, they'll actually walk down into the bot lane, get pushed forward really far in that brush, and try to get a surprise sneak attack as the 2v2 walks in. I think because it's a Braum and Lucian, they won't be so uh, audacious, if you will. <laughs> but always keep track of how those guys specifically are setting up their 1v1 because often they don't have to leash for Meliodas. Instead, they'll just start the wave early, so get a bit of an advantage there for the early push. And on a sick throw, as we mentioned, on his red, Meliodas has finished his and now is on to his next camp. That's Krugs. And we'll see again. We saw a lot more bot lane attention in the last game here with a pick like Fiora. Have to think. Although I, say, I feel like I say this every game, and then no one ganks for Zeros until the one time you just don't say it, and then they chain gank for him. But I would expect some attention here in the early game. And I think it's a credit to the fact that Zeros is able to make his own leads quite successfully. He's really good at recognizing when you know Meliodas isn't on his side of the map, so he needs to have the minion wave pushed into him, um, or when he does have the the emphasis that his jungler can join him, that he can be aggressive, he can trade uh, on his superior mechanics and really start to put people down. I think in some of the matchups versus impact. He was something like 40 CS up, so in the 1v1, he is very impressive. And that's certainly been true for him throughout his domestic career. He dominates the top lane in VCS. Of course, a very different set and caliber of opponents when you move to international, but certainly right now looking good as zoned boss off quite a lot of that wave and right now looking 10 CS up, although I imagine that won't stay true as the wave eventually will crash toward. I want to quickly talk about the jungle pathing as we see Ananasig is about to secure both Scuttle Crabs here. It was a red into Krug into Scuttle into Raptor start there for Meliodas. And by taking your Krug camp so early, um, you reset the timer on having Krugs available, which is the number one experience camp for the jungler. Um, and so it, it feels like a kind of like a power farm type of pathing, although things getting changed up now as we're posturing for a gank. Yeah, not very far forward. Stun gonna miss though from No Man's. There's the root gonna run away. The phase rush procs as well. So now Meliodas knows he actually stole the blue buff away, which Ananasik does not know about yet. 
And I love this adaptation here. We'll see where Ananasik goes. He's walking into the mid lane to help Nomans push it forward in case Rek'Sai is still around. They don't have perfect information about where Meliodas is. And if Ananasik doesn't walk over to the blue buff, then he is going to get three buffed again by Meliodas. Yeah, I was going to say maybe two for two on three buffs here. And by the looks of things, as Meliodas cruises down towards the blue, Ananasik, without the information, will go to what we know to be the wrong side of the jungle. And what incredible adaptation. It felt like Meliodas was just going to go for the power farm, you know, by resetting his Krug camp really early on in his jungle pathing. He can then just go for full clears, reset, walk back up to Krugs, and he's like, my composition scaling. I don't really need to muscle through this lane phase anyway, like Sejuani, this is yours. But as soon as he's giving information, he strikes. It's actually a gank first instead. They're gonna go in after the Brom. Santa's flash of the way, but already ignited down. Stand behind Gadget, but the flash fall from Big Cora. He wants it, he will get it. It's first blood once more. So well done right there. A lot expended, but Pallet's still holding his flash, and that's the key thing for me. The fact that they still have so much kill pressure in this lane, despite already feeding first blood to Big Coro, because Galio has access to the flash taunt. Also Zerif in top lane. Boss all gets slowed by the repost. Those vitals, nice spot, Zara Zeros finding those procs. The CS has evened up, which I think we expected, but now Zeros has to play on his weak side of the map as Ananasik is up here in top lane. Zeros does not have a ward ready, but I think suspects something might be happening here. Oh, he definitely suspects it, but can he survive it? Flash up. I think Rapos still down, but he does have that summoner spell. Zeros moves over, dances on the stun gonna land. The chain CC is good, and Boss able to grab a kill for himself. And the answer is no. He does not survive, but doesn't expend the flash, however, and does have access to TP. So we'll see if it's the scenario where huge two waves crashing into him. If he teleports back, this could be another trigger for uh, Sejuani just to revisit the gank as we look back bottom. However, you can see Meliodas sacrifice a potential buff to try and get a kill, and Big Koro flashing in, making it look nice and stylish. They did follow for the next kill, but could not grab it. This dive, however, going very nicely on the other side of the map. And it feels like a, a tale of two junglers. You know, as soon as information is giving over, someone is reacting to something on the map. Well, so far, again, Meliodas has one out in most of those exchanges. He actually went over, took the Raptor camp. He's now taking Krugs away. Zanana Sick is back taking Crabs for himself. Oh, actually going to be stunned there. Good flash done by Nomads, and that'll secure a kill. This time, Melee was too greedy. Yeah, finally punish, and a good uh, rotation there from Nomads. So just heads up, check if the Rek'Sai was hovering around, and picks himself up some gold. So TP going over, straight in onto Zeros, who's also TP'd back in. Stun Lance, Reposto for the slower. Zeros is just continuing to proc vitals. No ulties, but we can see the jungler all boss now, level six. And Zeros, I think this is the part where he gets a bit greedy. That's a nice flash, however. Gets himself out to safety. Gets over the big wall. I love the fact that boss was trying to bait him in, however. Looked like Fiora was going to take that 1v1 matchup. Make sure, like, no, no, no. I got access to level six. We push you off two waves. I have the EXP uh, advantage here. And then Ananasik comes around the corner. So while Zeros looks flashy, gets out with his life, it's still a big win for boss and Ananasik. Yeah, with flashes like that, you can get out of those situations, but still can't you a lot as you mentioned. Demolish gonna proc. That'll be at least one plate over to Vega here as Ananasik and Boss split that early gold and make it two as Boss again springboarded nicely here in the top lane as Meliodas continuing to steal jungle away will actually take the red buff on the Santa's runs interference but doesn't check the brush and that blue goes over. Zeros though, good repost actually now gonna try and make some sort of 1v2 out play. We're gonna get the first kill, finds it, ulti procs and now Boss, I think he has to get out of there. He's got no ulti, Zeros still chasing. I do not know how this guy makes miracles out of nothing. Crazy play from Zeros right there. Managed to get something back for himself. And if he can get this wave shoved in, maybe start inching back some of that CS. And again, with Meliodas, you know, leaving his top laner just fine in a 1v2 situation means that Gadget gonna be forced off this turret and plates will go over to Big Coro and Pallet. Uh, meanwhile, though, the tempo of the game is still starting to speed up. So, yeah, Zeros makes the miracle play. He starts uh, to grab something back on the top side. Meanwhile, while he's absorbing so much attention from two members, Meliodas just sets up another objective. There's uh, plates going down in the bottom lane. There's Zeros winning the 1v1 in the top side, and now Meliodas picking up a free dragon. I'm also pretty confident that that blue buff has been up since the start of the game. So he'll finally start it off, although I think he's going to donate it, but let's watch this again. And you know, I was just about to comment on the fact that Zeros is sitting on basically all long swords, whereas he's competing against a team at. So the play style or a play pattern was going to be that Aurelia was always going to have the priority of the shove there with the team at, whereas Zeros would only win if it went for an all-in engagement. So the fact that he finds it in a 2v1 is awesome. Bottom lane though, Meliodas gets the kill onto Gadget. Now a Nanasic there, too late to try and save his teammates, and Meliodas will keep chasing. 
Pallet forward, finds the taunt, grabs Santas. Big Koro then needs to roam himself over. Pallet getting low, but here's the Kaisa finally joining the fray. Meliodas gets the kills on knockups found for Pallets. Just as punch. And PvB winning out in that 3v3. Curious how it started though. The fact that, you know, people are getting caught out in their own jungle. Another good stun. Oh no, had enough to flash out. Now gonna realm up out to safety. Has teammates on that side, so it can't chase there for Vega. But doing his job, Nom was actually just posturing there because he was trying to zone off No Man's and kind of keep information if Vega Squadron were going to collapse and try to retaliate in this bot lane. So getting another peek about how all of this started. And it was a failed flash and another fight, just 2v2 up in this bot lane. These bot laners, they cannot stop. They certainly cannot. Big Koro, as they check back in, actually 30 CS ahead of his opponent. As the play continues, PvP know they've just got more strength here. And Vega Squadron, to be frank, you just have to learn how to lose gracefully in these types of scenarios. To be that far down and, you know, still caught out in the lane like this, it feels nice to get one back for Nanasik, but Gadget is just finding himself further and further into a hole on a champion that he is not going to scale as well against. Certainly golf clap there for the pick. How it does go down, but Big Cor has already finished out Stormraiser. As we already pointed out, that CS League is only now 20. Still very healthy off to another good start here on Kaisa. And with Zeros, you know, finding his advantage now, grab his own tier mat, already got himself a kill in that little outplay. Feels like the top side's maybe on a bit more of its own for a little while longer, and with an Infernal Drake coming up in a number of minutes. I mean, it must be because everything happens bot lane. You can't even leave the top laners on their own devices. Both junglers though, finding the right read, actually up here in the top side right now, so could see a 2v2 develop. Nanasik will walk over a control ward. Gonna hit down the uh, plant just to make sure no one's there in the Herald. You also see the control ward there. Back down bot side though. Santa's still only level 5. Big Korra level 7. Very significant discrepancy there in the 2v2. Calling out from Gadget doesn't really find much and just feels like the bot lane's only getting stronger. Yeah, and now that that calling is taken care of, uh, I expect that Big Korra and Pallet they're just eyeing them up. They're looking for their window. You can see it, Pallet just sprinting forward. He wants blood. He's like, you cannot compete with us. We will just kill you. Guys, is level eight. Sanus is still level five. It's about to get worse, because here comes Rise and Meliodas. Yeah, again, just have to force them off here. Vega, oh. rightfully, do not go there, but it just feels so bad for Oscurin. Someone has to help them, but the only safe route here, because you can see how carefully No Man's is trying to like smoke uh, PvP out of his jungle, is for Ananasic. Maybe? Meliodas wants it, Ananasic there with the counter gank. Meliodas forced to flash over, good ult finds it. There's a soon to follow up Meliodas low, but not fallen just yet. Flash forward, W is gonna grab it. Here's the Galio roaming in, Pallet doesn't grab the knockup, but again, Nor's gonna keep chasing in onto the Sejuani. Big Koro's here, he just wants a few more kills. He's gonna grab it, nice snipe on the Void Seeker. Finds yet another kill. And you can see what an Anasic is thinking. He wants to make use of the fact that he has a Syndra. You have so much burst damage uh, at this low of level between the Sejuani and the Syndra, and he does rightfully find the shutdown, but it just takes oh, so long. That hurts. Zeros reads boss's mind. Just lunges out of the way of that ulti, and that's all called off for boss in that trade. Zeros might have been fancy a dive here. Ah, uh, he cleaned up the creeps. Demolish proc, lunges out. Just wanted a bit of damage on the turret. And look at where Ananasik is. He's sprinting up into the top lane. So I think this is Zeros not only trying to read what boss is doing, but also read what his jungler is possibly up to. His jungler, though, already on this side as well. Takes down the Scuttle Crab and pops underground for some Tremor Sense. Is now going to see that Ananasik is in the area. So Zeros will have the information. Maybe he just fancies another 1v2. Not yet, it seems. But look at this. The fact that Meliodas finds where the enemy jungler is and then just pieces out. You know, this isn't a situation where we can look for this 2v2 here. Like, I'm going to hide around the corner. Let's try to bait them. It's, I got the information. Let's quickly continue to try to set up multiple objectives on this map so that when one thing goes right, it all goes right. Did you see that? I did. That was interesting. It was. Noel has arrived, though. Uh, what? people completed. I'm admitting that it disappeared and went invisible. Don't worry about it. As Infernal Drake also up in five seconds, but Bongui Buffalo actually want the Rift Herald here. And this is part of one of those high tempo setups. It's that Meliodas finds where Nanasik is, he immediately goes back to his jungle, holds the mid wave, the TPs come in, everyone's rotated, and suddenly what could have just been a 2v2 top side to help out Zeros is, okay, you get your back, we already pushed him under the tower, let's set up Rift Herald. Speaking of Zeros, uh, a man of one way in this 1v1, Ravenous. Hydra now completed, so 
certainly looking for a 1v1 probably throughout most of this game. Great double taunt though from Pallet, but Vega might try and fight in. They find Meliodas, they need to snipe him down. That should be Rift Held over, but the fight's still gonna continue. Big Koro gonna try and find the pick up the Rift Held over. He needs to pick up the eye, he does get it, but it will cost him his life. Ananasik is trying his hardest though to get Vega Squadron back into this game. Three, three, and one right now on the Sejuani. Managed to also secure the uh, Rift Held for himself there, as now mid. I take it all back, Zeras. Goes mid for the dive, doesn't need it as Noel, able to find the kill with an assist over from the Fiora. Also gets a TP out of it as well, but Boss probably does not want to tussle here with Fiora. And this is the feel bad moment where Nanasik is actually having a good game. He's trying to go blow for blow with Meliodas here. The rest of his map just unfortunately is not on the same page. They're not in the same fight. We see this again, Pout thinks he's got an opportunity, but Vegas say this time we can fight. And I actually want to uh, point at Null here. I think if he actually just turned around and assisted with Meliodas to burn down the Rift Herald, you're in a very different situation. Like, let Pallet zone them away. It's clear that you weren't looking to kill them there, that it was to keep them away from the Rift Herald. Zeros, though, too bloodthirsty. Does chase for the kill, and Null does get it at least. So there was an extra one in there that slipped my mind earlier, but PVB still rocketing up in gold. 4,000 ahead here at 14 and a half minutes, and Little Infernal Drake has been abandoned for a number of minutes, but again, there's so much movement around the map. Vega just kind of forced to respond, although this time might be setting something up here. Stun Lance in onto Pallet. Meliodas also over the wall, but can see the movement with the Tremor Sense, so knows that Vega have grouped to try and take this objective. Yeah, trying to muscle for control. What's interesting to me is that uh Vega grouped with all five members, even now Nomen's cutting down the river. Whereas it's very clear that PvP recognized that the first step to this Infernal Drake was to secure priority over bottom. And instead of pulling down Fiora, they reset Xeros and they send him top lane. And you'll see trades like this all the time from PvP where they kind of think farther ahead. Like, is it nice to have the battle stats of the Infernal? Absolutely. But it's more important for us to kind of get the, uh, the gold from the towers themselves and get immediate um, advantage versus like waiting on the scaling of the Infernal. Yeah, as a note, the uh, gold lead that's pretty substantial here for Feng Fu Buffalo is uh, still without the first turret of this game being taken. So a lot of gold left in one of those turrets if you can knock it down. And I think this is quite uh, counterintuitive to what a lot of people will read on PvP. They're not just a mindless fight team. Although, as I say that, mindless fighting. Yeah, Noel forced to flash away as an Anasik does look mid with the ulti. It's the fact that they will look for cross-map objective trades like that top tower for the Infernal priority. Fiora is a champion that kind of bends the game to her will in a lot of ways. Zeros, they're going to pop the ulti, try and duel boss, but no man's right behind him. Vanguard's edge was the follow-up, and Zeros is able to get the vitals down. Still, the shot down lands for boss. Now Meliodas in a 1v3. Cannot escape, will get a kill as a result, but stunned down and killed by no man's in the end. But the fact that it's Syndra in particular that's picking up a lot of that kill gold is now a possible play set up bottom. Pallet was spotted out by a ward, though. He's still going. He is certainly going. Has the flash ready, does not commit it, and barely misses the taunt onto Santa's. Gadget, though, going back in, but Big Chorus says, hey, I'm here too. I think Big Koro says, hey, these minions are worth more to me than their lives. He's got three kills, so it's kind of impressive. But again, Zeros chasing in, and this is some of the greed that we can see from him as well. Uh, some of the greed. I'm going to point out that there was a Rift Herald that was dropped down into the mid lane, so it's not like Nal's going to leave that to its own devices on his tower. He's not rotating with you guys. Distraction worked there, at least for the Sidwani. But uh, unfortunately, that still means that Rift will not take a turret, and Seros did get the top out of turret, so he collects that gold. Now has a fade for himself, building it towards what? Actually, probably Trinity Force. Although, of course, Black Cleaver, a decent option as well. Can you imagine being a Nanasek, looking for a gank, and the guy that you're going to gank immediately turns and lunges towards you? That is the state of this game, this bot lane. Pallet was not having any of that. I mean, since that 1v2, that's kind of been the story, at least on the top lane. Who's ganking who there? You will come down here, you will bring double buff, and I will like it. And Zeros now with a long lane to play in. And that Ravenous Hydra. This is, uh, this is where Fiora can start to get a little out of hand. Boss still working on item number one. Actually also has to divert into an Executioner's Calling because you must cut the healing from Fiora to have any chance in a 1v1. But in a very long sustained 1v1. Only delaying the pain that Zeros is bringing to that 1v1. Whether you like it or not, he's making the game about himself in a few ways, although rotating mid. The ganking Fiora, not something we always see. Onto No Man's here to kick it off, but an Anasik might be an easier target. Gadget here, though, to try and turn it back around. Meliota looks for the knockup, finds it, but he's going to get himself stunned. Actually pops in into the ulti to avoid the CC, but will still fall down. Vega 
starting to punish this over aggression. Way too deep there. An excellent setup there. Anana Sick, again, is still, it feels like the hard carry, but with some of those previous kills now falling into the pocket of No Man's, it feels like he has someone to actually play around. This Syndra Sejuani combo is starting to be devastating, despite the fact that Nal had an excellent sidestep on the Sejuani ult. Lift that one again. Stun starts off. Nal and goes in. Exactly, and you can see that he's just trying to set up for uh, Anana Sick to just dunk onto Nal, but sidesteps the ult. Doesn't matter though, because uh, they had the numbers advantage, their bot lane finally rotated an advantage for them. Gadget doing a great job zoning away anyone else to follow up. And Meliodas is like, I'm in too deep, I must go deeper. That can be the motto of the top half of the map. I'm not getting out of this one, guys. Sometimes. I'm taking him with me. All right, well, again, still despite all that, still 4,500 gold ahead for Fong Vu Buffalo. And most notably in those last two fights, Big Koro has not been present and he's now finished his Ginsu's Rage Blade. So, so 40 CS up. If he, when he makes his way into a team fight, Big Carl will certainly make his presence known. And it kind of feels like this is going to be about execution, at least at this point in the game. Like, does Big Koro survive the Sejuani ultimate and the Syndra ultimate? If yes, Fung Bu Puffalo probably gonna win. If no, there's your hope for Vega Squadron. We'll certainly have the CC to do it, but we're continuing to move around the map here. Fung Bu Buffalo up two turrets to zero. So again, Zeros having a great time, but another 1v2 situation is upon us. We'll see how Zeros does this time. He was spotted out by a ward, so Fong Vu Buffalo know exactly what's up here. Yeah, this time it's Zeros kind of knowing there, knowing also that his jungle is coming up. And I also think it's respect to the fact that they're keeping track of Nal's TP timer, although... I expect, yeah, straight in. Big Koro wants to start it off. Realm up in for Nal. Big Koro's gonna face take the CC. Power finds the taunt. Sanchez into stasis, but Big Koro's still alive. Made such a bold play and will be rewarded too with bold. a death. That's too bold indeed. Oh. And now Vanguard Zed finds three pallets just waiting in the wall as Zeros does get the kill on an Anastic on the other side of the play into boss now for the next one. Zeros insta flashes over to try and seal it all and PvB did make it in time. Big Koro may have made the mistake, but his team's still there to clean up the mess. But it is a two for two trade, so Big Koro, very bold maneuver here. No man's me. Oh, oh, oh. Zeros doesn't have a flash, so surely he's not going to go in. In fact, plus can over the wall just to make No Man safe. No, but he knows that No Man doesn't have any mana. <laughs> so he's looking at him like, you get two tries. It's a tough fight. Oh, had enough mana to steal away the red buff, so he's going to keep that one safe and away from Zeros. So who gets the last laugh at the end? Not Big Koro. That play was, as you said, Frosker, in two bold. <laughs> two bold. In uh, China, they say two hero. That was, that was two that hero. That was absolutely two hero. That's also a cloud drape, Meliodas. Gonna refocus the team onto the objectives briefly, at least remembers that it's there. Blue buff over to Noll, who's continuing to stack up farm and gold, so mid laners both looking decent here in this one. Okay guys, we need to we need to reset, we need to calm down here just a little bit. Make sure that when you're fighting, you're fighting over something worth it. And it felt like this one was just about the swagger and the flex. The fact that Big Coral he just doesn't have perfect information and he just flies in there and then he's immediately punished. Like you said, the CC is there to lock down the Kaiser. So if it lands, generally this kind of stuff will happen and Big Koro paid the price. Yeah, just uh, maybe he thought Sejuani was on his team. Zeros though chases down the Sejuani under the turret, now flashes off the boss, also chasing near the turret. So certainly bold is a, a good word to describe the state that Pong Fu Buffalo are in. The scary thing, though, is that uh, Zeros is now starting to pick up some of these kills, so it's no longer just being funneled heavily into Meliodas or Big Koro. Uh, and that's the nice thing about PvP's setup right now, is that the gold feels like it's split across all of their members on a comp that scales better, whereas unless Nanasik and Nomans are just showing up and just nailing these team fights, the same cannot be said for Vega Squadron's comp. And in some ways, it feels like, le to a less extreme degree, degree, but still similar here for Vega, where you went to tussle with Fong Vu Buffalo early and you paid the price again. It's not as steep as it was in game number one, but Fong Vu Buffalo certainly know that they're playing with a gold lead. And it feels bad because you look at Vega's composition, you know, this was supposed to be much stronger in the lane phase this time around, and it's still just not connecting with it. And they brought the resources to help them. Uh, Gadget and uh, Santas in particular are just not having a good uh, tournament right now. Certainly Big Cora and Pallet continuing to have a strong showing for themselves here at MSI 2019. Still, also the map being so small for Vega is just always troublesome, especially when you're getting 1-3-1, one, one, which Ryzen Fiora will have a tendency to do. Collapse here on mid, will zone them away, and again, just a few hits on the tower, although ulti committed. Pallet going in, looking to find the taunt. 
can't choose between them. Finally gets the jungle, and Norther also roamed up, so that's Gadget dead as he got caught up at the pass. And now Braum Ulti gonna try and buy some time redemption to reset here for PvP. And they're gonna keep fighting. Mel Meliodas fine to knock up Big Kara, grabs a double, make it three as Nor able to grab the next kill in onto another stick. Zaros is cutting them off. That tower is one hit from just popping down. Uh, Vega Squadron needs a backup. Tower falls down. Boss and No Man's maybe too far forward. Perhaps Baron on the brains instead for the Buffalo. And I feel like Ananasik, he recognizes that his map has collapsed around him and he's just trying to find the right play. Unfortunately, he can't figure out which side to actually play around because none of his sides are winning. It means that he falls down, there's no jungler to contest, and this is a free Baron and what looks like a very handed game. You can, only, you can only have so many buckets in so many hands to bail the water out of the boat for Oscar and also the boat's on fire. It's just tough. Vega, they'll try and get something here. A TP will be committed by Fong Vu. Try and save the turret. No man's with the ulti. Nolz pops the Seraphs. And that's going to be enough to stay alive and keep the minions away from the structure. But that's the state of the game that we're at. You see the TP coming down. You know exactly who's, who is it going to be and what they're landing with. Oh, I like this. On the pallet here. Very sneaky fog of all play for Vega. That will be a kill gifted over as Boss able to collect it. Okay, we're on the board. We're back, boys. Let's see if they can take something here. Coming onto Nol. Oh, yeah, the Seraphs still. Must have missed seeing that one, but Careful. not that healthy on the rise. They're trying to commit for the turret. They will finally take their first tower of the game. But still down about 7,000 gold. That's the best look I've gotten from Vegas Squad in this game, though. That that feels reassuring. They recognize where they had the tempo. Um, they're trying to punish the fact that PvB are still being very disrespectful for how they're walking up to... Uh, to Vega Squadron and then just trying to brute force with their gold lead around. So Vega Squadron will say, no, 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 you must give us at least this much respect. And I like the idea of, you know, just letting Feng Vu play into you a little bit more, you know, being reactionary and punishing mistakes. That, of course, requires information, which in the early game maybe wasn't there as much. And I think it's also really important that they were finally grouped up. As Mega Zeros. shot for us because Zeros is fighting again. Boss now the target. Big Cora's here as well. I think they can continue. W's going to miss, though. Kaiser needs a little bit more to charge in there. 2v3 though, as we can see Santa's insta-cleanse out of the ulti. Here comes the Galio charging in, but that's Pallet gonna try and save the day, and Santa's will be the first target. Pallet found a massive flash taunt as Big Cora grabs another. Pallet for president. That's like the fourth three-man taunt that he has found. Yeah, you look at Big Cora's skull and you think he's doing good, but always check the support next to the marksman. Ulti there from No Man's, but Pallet pops the boss going out to safety, and a reminder that Fong Vu Buffalo do still have Baron. So these turrets are going to melt pretty swiftly with the waves stacked up. I mean, silver lining, the base isn't destroyed yet for uh, Vega Squadron, but they are very quickly getting shoved in. And I was just commenting how, you know, the nice thing was is that Vega Squadron were finally grouped up. Oh, no. The boat's still kicking on fire, but it's still intact for Oscar, and Six Tower goes down. But against this com uh, combo from Fongry Buffalo, we talked about it in Champion Select, its ability to split up the map and then use its mobility to quickly collapse either side is what's so devastating here. So Vegas Squadron, they want to pair up with Ananasik and No Man to kind of follow that big burst damage, but they can't get there. I think for me also is one of the reasons Ryze is such a powerful champion. Just very, very good in the side lane. And uh, you don't have to pick something like the Fiora to make it work, but certainly that will kind of show you the extreme of this sort of splitting up of the map. Just a hit and run, League of Legends. Kind of hit, run, and then hit again in the case and of again, and Buffalo. again, and again. Yeah, but I uh, gotta go back, spend some gold. Baron will uh, tick down, so only 4,400 gold or so on the Baron power play, and make it a Cloud Drake to boot for a bit of extra there for Buffalo. Plus help them get around the map. Certainly nice, they actually got three for themselves. But I mean, as soon as you saw this play, you knew Zeros was going in. <laughs> Uh, the confidence then, uh, and knowing that they needed at least two members to try to contest with this Fiora. And then the fact that they're able to collapse faster. That this is never going to be a fair fight unless they have a massive numbers advantage for Vega Squadron. Props on the cleanse there from Big Coro. Basically frame perfect. And there, as you said, Pallet swoops in. Continues his strong campaign in the presidency. And uh, finds a three-man taunt. This Fong Vu Buffalo up about 12,000 gold. Goodness. I lost his QSS. I was looking at Big Core's items. I was like, I swear he had a QSS. Did he sell it? He's selling a lot of things, but... Wrapped it around the handle of his sword. He upgraded it. I normally don't see that item upgraded. Well, has uh, starting to run out of things to buy. There on the Kaiser. Still one slot, though, open for Big Koro. Nor also Realm up to the top lane because he has decided that he must take the top inhibitor at all costs. 
with a minute 40 on Baron. We have Zeros in the long, long lane there in the bottom side. And this is how it's going to play out for the map state for Funk and Buffalo. They're going to have Ryze and Fiora constantly cheating forward in those long lanes. And then it's going to be about rotating very quickly with the Kai'Sa ultimate or the Galley ultimate to either side. Well, Ananasik back down here, but Zeros already showed that he's uh, feeling confident in any sort of 1v2. Gonna start it off again here. Zeros there with a the repost, finds a stun on Tool Rallya, pops the ulti just to start the duel, has the GA up as well. Will now resurrect. Here's a redemption, but a little mistimed. Looks for the stun, does find it, but again, losing the structures is the big deal here. But look at Vegas Squadron. Oh. Yeah, oh. Nor is oh. taking matters into his own hands, Froskurin. Well, he got it. You said that eventually, at all costs. Again, has taken the turret. Now gonna just move in. Zero still playing around. Walks into there. Oh, Galio's in. That's not very fair at all, is it? And Anasi gonna get chunked out. Pallet there with another taunt. And uh, Ignite down, not quite enough to kill Sejuani, but they're losing the base. So three members of Vega will chase onto two members of the Fongfu Buffalo, and the rest of them will steamroll down those inhibs. And Vega Squadron are just trying to find something that they can crack, but nothing is breaking here for Fongfu Buffalo. And again, Meliodas, this time he's the one with the CC, finds the knockup, flashed in to get it. Looks like they are going to just take the last inhibitor tower and finish off the inhib as well. Jungle up in about 20 seconds here for Vega, so PvP will leave the area, but it's one of those things when when all three lanes are getting pushed in, you know, this far behind, it just feels like you have no good choices. Ah, uh, and especially when the Baron is going to be spawning in three seconds right now. So, Vegas Squadron, I think they clear out their base and maybe you sprint towards the Baron, you try to play some vision and, and take the gamble on it, but they know they've got one option and it's this fight one over Baron. Well, again, PvB go back, reset. Make sure to run there. Also, Ananasik was the one that was dead, so he'll be more delayed to the objective. They do have a little blue trinket on it, so they know it hasn't been started just yet, but soon that vision will be snuffed out. Of course, Zeros is here hiding in a brush. Vanguard Zed lands in there for boss. Zeros trying to dance around. Nice maneuver, though, from the Aurelia. But Zeros going to keep chasing. He's got his flash. So does boss stun's going to land, and Aurelia going to keep running the wrong way, unfortunately. How far can she run, though? Keeps going in towards the turret. Maybe looking for the execute. Super minions wave hello. Boss taking the tower hits. Zeros wants it. He will collect it. Does get the kill, but Noel actually this time too far forward. At all costs, it will be. He will forfeit his life, and that's a thousand gold to the Syndra. Unfortunately, they committed so much that the Baron is over to PVB. It's a heavy shutdown, but like you said, it was the Baron that was the true prize. So Noel gladly gives his life for that. You now have the ability to start funneling all of these Barons up uh, super minion waves into uh, Vega's base. And just, it's a matter of time, it feels. Few would give tactical credit to Noel there for his positioning. I will not. But uh, at least his death is not in vain. So the team gets the Baron uncontested as a result. His only job was to go forward and to look delicious. That's all. Just be a distraction. Well, it worked. <laughs> that was the plan. But PVB now, ooh, without their rise, he will be up in about 15 seconds with his teleport. And they have Baron for three minutes with supers in every single lane. Are we going to pad KDAs? Are we going to end the game? What's the, what's the call here? Time to walk the minions in. I'm expecting Xeros to tower dive any second now, but I mean, Vega have to go. You can't lose all your Nexus turrets without a fight. Big Coral even going invis in view of the turret. Forced just... to burn the heal, but again, Pallet finds the taunts. Turrets are going to fall. Galli going to try and tank up what he can, but he's not going to last too long. But again, the Nexus is open. PvP just have to wait here. And Big Coros is shooting the Nexus, you have to go, they dive in, pop the Vanguard ditch, they will get the kill, Meliodas revives, Big Coros, how did he live? The rest of the team dives in, the Nexus is exposed, and that's going to be all she wrote, PvB, match point now in the series. And they just made it look way too easy right there, the fact that Big Coro ate the Syndra ultimate and it only just half helped him, and then instantaneously was just back and ready for the fight. That says everything you need to know about that game. The yeah. AD carry was invincible. Man, dance a good item. That's the one that let him live through the rest of that. But I mean, we thought, you know, how explosive the first five to 10 minutes of that last game was, that we were going to get maybe something a little more simmered down. Maybe the early game was a little slower, but the rest of the game was even faster for PvB. You can just feel the confidence building. Uh and I do want to give credit to Ananasik. I think in the early game, he was trying to get something going for his team, but Gadget and Santos are just too big of a liability right now. Big Coral and Pallet are just punching holes through them, and that whole side of the map is just a no-go zone. It's collapsing way too fast. Well, it's looking good so far for PvB. So to get more insight on the Fongvu Buffalo win, let's leave it to the State Farm Analyst Desk. 
Thank you very much, Pastry Time. Uh, you can leave it to us, but you might not even need us with the way that Frost just put it, because I think we're going to align uh, kind of across the board on what she's saying. Vega opting to go for an even more standard draft this time around than game one, which means that they are just going to have to stack up one to one as good or better. And that was not the case. Look at my win conditions. Don't do standard play. <laughs> Lucian Braum is pretty standard. It's not going to go well. How did I ever? Give this team what were you a thinking? game. A singular game was all I asked out of the You know what it was? You thought that they were the best drafting team ever. That's what That's I thought you. it was, yeah. and unfortunately. Uh, not an overreaction. Uh, while, while they went for or opted into a more standard draft, I think Frost's point has to be acknowledged that uh, uh, Nanasek was doing as much as he could with the tools available to him to try and create an advantage, at least on the top side of the map. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is what I was talking about, that this guy will sacrifice his own farm, his own position on Summoner's Rift to be able to give advantages to other people, you know, teaming up with that Aurelia. The layering of CC is always going to be so nice. And this just shows that it is such a difficult matchup to win because when it goes right for Xeros, he's able to turn the 2v1. Yeah, I mean, this is why Xeros is considered so good and, and probably the best player in play-ins uh, coming from the emerging regions. Xeros is so good. And, and NSX did the right thing. Even in draft, I was saying like, oh, the Fjord's a little scary because you probably lose topside 2v2s. Like you can win 2v1s if you yes, play you it perfectly. Uh, but, you know, the, the Sejuani is really strong at camping. The problem was the fact that Meliodas didn't need to go top ever. Xeros was doing great, and the bot side was just a train wreck. Yeah, and this is the thing, right, is when you don't have to just shore up a weak side of the map, you know, you're not playing against double lift or core JJ, you're not just trying to gain vision, you're actually trying to smash people. You throw a third member down there with the recognition that they have to count top side, they have to count mid lane to get the advantages you need, mm -hmm. then you can just run a train over Gadget and Santas right now. They are putting up no resistance in a 2v2, make it a 3v2, and it just looks very ugly. Yeah, Vegas bot lane continues to be a liability, while Pallet and Big Coro, alongside Meliodas, really have found a way to pick them apart and use that, you know, to create as big a goal lead as they need to ultimately take the game. Yeah, I mean, Substantial Coro had a great game. Uh, he's been playing Kaisa, which is not really super strong in lane, but they've still been getting good laning phases. He often is, you know, prioritizing a lot of damage early on with, like, the Blade of the Rune King in game one, knowing that these are faster-paced games. He's absolutely crushed it. MasterCard player of the game, that's one for Big Coro. The first game, it went to Pallet. So the bot lane for PvB really showing up here today against uh, the struggling duo for Vega. Yeah, they certainly are, and I think that you have to take a whole look at the lens of Fongu at the moment because they lost areas of the map that I think that they should have won. You know, mm -hmm. I think that if you get Rek'Sai up there, you can potentially turn some ganks. I think with Rek'Sai and Ryze, it's kind of cardinal sin to not at least burn summoner spells on that uh, Cinder a couple of times, you know, put some pressure on the mid lane. They didn't open up the map. They didn't look at 1-3-1. Uh, there's lots of little things that you can nitpick. They're looking for greedy plays, but at the end of the day, when the gap between the two teams is this big, it just looks so hard for them to be able to find any avenue to kind of fall down. And when they do, it just doesn't... It looks like Vega regains control of a portion of the map. They never really gain anything. Yeah, it was 8 to 10 in kills at one point, but they were down two turrets. And it was it was like a 5,000 gold loop at that point. Yeah, 15, right. 18 minutes into the game, when it's like, well, the Fung Buffalo are making tons of mistakes. You're killing them over and over, but you're not converting it into anything because you're so far behind in pressure and CS. Right, you see a couple plateaus there in the gold graph, and that largely comes from the kind of overreaching that yep. we talked about for PvB. And so, and so from there, I turn towards Game 3, and I think while we talk about the likelihood of PvB winning being, you know, uh, almost guaranteed, my question is what then do we want to see? I'm not going to knock a team for coming away with the victory, but I do think there is something to be said for looking for that cleanliness, yep. looking to reduce those mistakes, because this is a weaker opponent. You're about to go into a stage of games against almost objectively better opponents across the board, and so you can't afford to make mistakes. And that's what I want to say, Dash, because they've had their fun. They've had their two flex games. Okay, now turn scary. Like, clean up your gameplay, come in, take care of business. This is exactly what TL was able to do. I want, like, a 24-minute victory. I want the easy execution. And uh, if they're able to execute on that, then you say, okay, this is a team that was very hyped coming into last year's Worlds and can potentially do damage once again in a group stage. Yeah, I mean, Humongous Koro has been really good this series, so I want to see them continue to, you know, take something a little greedy in the bot lane because you're going to win it anyways. And then from there, like you said, I think it's actually the top in the solo lane that yep. need to, uh, excuse me, mid lane that need to clean up a little bit. Uh, Zeros is phenomenal, but sometimes it feels like he's, I'm going to make a big play kind of guy. And right. 
that's fine, but you need to start curtailing that a little bit because you can't play like that, like we were saying, against the better teams. And I think there is one wild card left that you throw if you are Vegas Squadron. I think you go towards a Morgana bottom lane and you look to wave clear oh, and just force it. it out and then get a roaming support for Santas. Like, just try and match on the map somewhere because they're losing on the map so early that I don't think just... Uh, coming into it with, you know, an Anastic trying to out-jungle is going to be enough. Like, just get more people onto the map. Well, there you have it, ladies.